If you are a returning subscriber or if you are a frequent viewer of my videos, then you have probably realized by now that I am married. Yes, believe it or not, I found somebody to marry me even when I do this. Look at that and say, well, you probably hardly was able to have you know do anything. You able to have you know do anything. You able to have you know do anything. You and I've been pretty open about that fact and that my debt payoff journey was not you know, a solo journey that I am married. We both work, so there are two incomes in our household, and that is very important when talking about paying off debt. And some of you have actually commented on a couple of my videos stating that being single and on a debt-free journey is a whole different ball game. And someone even suggested that I do a video about it on my channel. And ironically, a man who I won't really mention his name, I'll just put like a, a little picture of him right here. He just started a new series called Winter is Coming. It's all about single women and their impending financial doom. I definitely don't agree with that. So I thought, why not do my own version of that um, for this video? And unlike this guy, I'm wanting to do a more constructive video about what singles can do to live their best financial lives now. And what are some things that you can do if you're single and want to pay off a significant amount of debt? Like, there are some things that are just kind of obvious about this topic, but still, I'd like to touch on them because I want my viewers to know that this channel isn't just solely for married people or for people with families. This is an all-inclusive tea party for all different walks of life because let's face it, we all have debt or have been in debt and money isn't really something that you can escape from whether you're married or not. Unless you're Amish. And I thought to myself actually over the past year and a half that the Amish were really onto something. So before I get into the tea, why not hit that like button and while you're at it, subscribe to join the tea party. First off, I do want to say that I was a bit reluctant to film this video because who am I to speak on this topic because I'm not single. And I don't doubt some of you single people probably rolled your eyes when you saw the title of this video. I get it, I get it. I got married at a young age. Well, 26, but I guess that's young for this generation. And prior to that, I knew nothing about budgeting or investing. I was good at saving money, but that's about it. It wasn't until I got married that I started caring more about generational wealth. But nowadays, some singles are out here killing it financially. Many are actually making a salary that's equal to two basic incomes and don't really need a mate to help them financially. But that still doesn't mean that they're financially secure. Studies show that 60% of millennials who are making $100,000 or more per year are still living paycheck to paycheck. The report also states that this pattern of living paycheck to paycheck isn't so much about income as it is about expenses. There's an acronym that describes this type of millennial and it's called HENRY. And it stands for high earner, not rich yet. The acronym was invented in 2003, but it has come to characterize a particular group of 30-somethings, six-figure earners, who struggle to balance their spending and savings habits. Henry's typically fall victim to lifestyle creep. When one increases one's standard of living to match a rise in discretionary income, they prefer a more comfortable and expensive lifestyle that leaves them living paycheck to paycheck. I do want to note here that this study didn't really distinguish single millennials and married millennials but only 44% of millennials between the ages of 23 and 38 were married in 2018. And that number is plummeting as we speak. So we can assume that it's um, the majority of these millennials are in fact single that I'm talking about, the Henrys. So we can gather that a good portion of the high earning millennials are in fact unmarried. So we've got the Henrys. And by the way, I do think that a lot of Henrys can actually be married. But for the sake of this video, we're talking about the unmarried Henrys. Being a Henry, in my opinion, comes down to social media influences. But I will say that every generation has Henrys. They're just called something different, like the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses, you know? And now it's keeping up with the Henrys. But there are a few differences, though, that are worth mentioning. Number one, of course, like I stated before, Henrys are in reference to high-earning millennials, those making above $100,000. The other difference is, is that in today's time, $100,000 isn't worth as much as it was in the past. Inflation has caused a drop in the value of a dollar. So much so that nowadays, a household earning $100,000 per year is actually considered middle class. 
and things are just getting more and more expensive. This is another reason why high earning singles still find themselves living paycheck to paycheck. So enough of the doom and gloom. I don't want this to be a depressing video, okay? This is not the winter is coming type thing, all right? I'm not on some Game of Thrones, like doom and gloom stuff, okay? <laughs> Even though I love the, the, the show, but anyway. There are actually financial benefits to being single. The first one, my favorite one, is that you get to save on food. I can't tell you how expensive our grocery bill is when I'm trying to buy lunch and dinner for two people five days a week while trying to eat organic. And then if you add kids to the mix, forget about it. Another financial benefit to being single is that you get to take more risks. You can start a side hustle without having to consult your spouse, or you can even just live more, more freely or more simply if you're on like a, a debt payoff journey. You can actually get by with doing the bare minimum as a single person, which can then allow you to save a lot more money. Another thing is that you get to save money on rent or even a mortgage if you purchase a smaller home. And here's a major benefit. You don't have to worry about taking on your spouse's financial baggage. Because believe me, some couples may look like they have it all together and that they make a lot of money, but really they may be deep, deep in debt because we got two different incomes here and two different debts. If they have debt, both of them have debt, but still. It's no joke, it really isn't. So if you're single and you're on a financial journey, here are some really cool, quick, easy money hacks to get the ball rolling. Number one, pay down your debt before making large investments. And make sure that you're keeping your credit utilization under 30%. Now, you don't have to pay off all of your debt completely, but if you owe a lot and your debt comes from different sources, then I would focus on trimming it down to a manageable level, or you can still save for an emergency fund. And speaking of emergency funds, number two, boost your emergency savings. You should be setting aside three to six months of living expenses. Number three, make sure that you're saving for retirement and if you can, boost it up. No one knows what the future holds, so you wanna make sure that you have a really good financial cushion just in case you need it for retirement. Number four, get yourself a Roth IRA and contribute to it right away. Roth IRAs offer several key benefits, including tax-free growth tax-free withdrawals in retirement, and no required minimum distributions. There is a maximum to how much you can contribute though, so just make sure that you look that up you know, before signing up for an IRA. But these things tend to build up compound interest over time, and it's tax-free, this is huge. And it can really help to increase that nest egg for your future. And number five, make sure that you have insurance. I'm talking life, disability, and even a medical plan. But not just any medical plan. You need a high deductible health plan or HDHP so that you can open up a health savings account, HSA, so that you can contribute to it um, for future medical expenses. You can also invest HSA dollars as well. Okay, this is a very important account to have. Definitely consider getting yourself an HDHP plan um, and, and use that HSA account. Just add to it every single month for future health expenses because things like that can happen. So you wanna have that extra money there as well. So if you like this video and if you found value in it, please throw me a like. And if you want more content like this about personal finance, saving for the future, um, investing, or just growing generational wealth for you and your family, or if you're single for yourself, be sure to subscribe to join the tea party and hit that bell to be notified when I drop my newest video. I post every single week. And you know what? Thanks for watching, friends. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye.